you've gone vegan. Have you always been vegan? No, I was uh, pseudo Mediterranean about two years ago, and uh, which I thought was healthy: red wine, cheese.、Uh, it was a great life. But unfortunately, I I was losing my memory,、uh, and I, I really wasn't that. I mean, I was about seven or eight years younger than my actual age, according to Inside Tracker, a testing company.、Um, I met Serena Poon, who's here in the audience, who Peter's been referencing. I've been referencing. She's a, among other things, a nutritionist,、um, but also a longevity expert, and a lot of things I don't know she does. And one of those things is what to eat.、Um, so she turned me on to veganism. Now, I would say I'm a struggling vegan. I still have butter and milk occasionally. I'll occasionally have some alcohol,、uh, but I do try to. Be plant focused as、yes. much as I can, and I do. It, it turns out I, I love plant stuff. I love hummus and baba ganoush and all that stuff. So I, I don't just eat salads.、Uh, but what what surprised me when I switched to、uh, listen to Serena is that I, I measure myself in many ways, as I think you all know.、Uh, I went back another two years in my biological age, just in a couple of months after switching to that diet. So I've been convinced. Now I think there are a lot of people who say, "Well, I got to have my meat." Out of my alcohol, I would say just try to temper it, especially the alcohol. Yeah, my my father used to say, "Pan metron adestan," everything in moderation.、Mm -hmm. And your fasting regime right now is it has it changed at all? Are you still、yeah. one meal a day, or are I, you? I try. I ate a little bit of lunch, as you saw. I I really try. As I think, Serena I will tell you, I, I, I struggle. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's really hard. I agree that just having one meal a day.、Um, Is a challenge. I think it's okay if you're not perfect. You, I try to skip breakfast. I try to skip lunch. I'm not always successful, but in general, my average day looks like most of my calories are eaten within a six-hour window. And so, do you I feel you're getting enough protein to keep your muscle mass? We've talked a lot about the importance of muscle、mm. and、uh, reversing sarcopenia as we age. Yeah, I do. So, I think if you if you don't pay attention to what you eat and you just eat lettuce leaves, you're not going to do it. But we're, Serena and I are very careful. We we focus on legumes and we we、uh, those plants that have high protein content and nutrition, and that's the key. You need to educate yourself on what to eat, not just when to eat.、Um, you know, you pinned a tweet、um, in which you talk about the factors that are counter to、uh, a longer, healthier life. Smoking, for sure. That's the worst. And、yeah, the worst. Alcohol intake. Again, new new data data says、uh, alcohol is worse than I even thought.、Um, so, so if you want your resveratrol, take the pill, not the red wine. Definitely. Okay. Waist size. What waist? A、uh, waist, waist size. size. Yeah.、Uh, so uh, people who are overweight、um, have a, a in general an older epigenetic age than those who. Stay at a BMI between,、uh, say, 21 and 24. So that's a fact. So if you want to age slower, maintain your BMI in what's considered a healthy range.、Yeah. Uh, inflammatory uh, CRP levels. Yep, I think that's. Yeah, it's in, called inflammation. Inflammation is the underlying killer for so much. It, for sure, for sure. And there are foods that you eat can, that can be inflammatory.、Uh, for instance, some of us are.、Uh, Have a reaction to dairy or to certain grains. Be careful about that. You don't want that. Your gut is very important for inflammation. You don't want bacteria getting into your gut, lodging in your bloodstream or in your brain. That can cause these diseases that we all know of. So yeah, keep inflammation low. And one of the best ways to do that is to、uh, not just eat well, but also make sure that you're not allergic to things in your environment. Right. Well, the the big killer is sugar. Um, glucose, particularly fructose, is also pernicious. And if you give animals lots of glucose,、um, and especially fructose, they will get fatty liver disease. They'll get diabetes. It's really bad. It is. And 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 why? You, why? Well, why? Well, there are two reasons that glucose is bad when it spikes. Three, if you include the brain fog. But let's just talk about physiology here.、Uh, one is that you're going to have glucose attached to proteins that makes them glom up. Think of it like caramelized body parts. This will. Ultimately, lower your longevity, reduce your longevity, give you type two, type two diabetes, and probably cardiovascular disease. On top of that, so that's one. Keep those glucose levels down. But also, what glucose is going to be doing to you at high levels is shutting off those protective mechanisms. Remember, particularly AMPK and the sirtuins, they get switched off by sugar.、Mm. So by having that up for most of the day, if you're eating three meals plus snacks, your defenses against disease and aging are going to be working at a minimum. So instead, 
keep those glucose levels low and consistent. You won't get the brain fog. You'll get fewer proteins modified that'll lead to disease. And thirdly, importantly, you'll actually stimulate your body's natural defenses against disease and aging. Yeah, on that note, by the way, yeah. I gave up dessert at age 40. So occasionally I steal it and it doesn't count if you steal it, right? Uh, but yeah, so glucose is a bad one. Um, something else to avoid is super high protein uh, because mTOR, it, it can be activated, but you don't want it activated all the time because it's not going to turn on the autophagy, the defenses to recycle proteins. And, well, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of people who believe that carnivore diets are the best for longevity. And certainly if you're an athlete or you want to bulk up, there are short-term gains. You'll feel better if you eat meat. You'll obviously have the protein to build up that muscle. But we can go through the evidence. When you look at populations of what they eat and how long they live, as well as the short-term effects when you eat a high-protein uh, carnivorous red meat-based diet, those changes are, will be good in the short run. But long-term, there's no evidence. In fact, I would say there's counter evidence to that being beneficial for longevity if that's your goal. In large part, yes. The sirtuins will also get switched off by high protein as well. It, it's funny when I say I've gone vegetarian recently, which is a where fact. Where are you going to get your protein? Yeah, where do you get protein yeah. from? Well, what do you think plants made of? It's, it's also mostly protein. Now, they're not as bioavailable. So you're getting like two thirds the amount as you would from a steak. Your body has equivalent. to work a little harder for it. Great. Yeah. I want my body to work harder. It's good for it. It burns energy. And it's also activating these defenses, as we mentioned. So I, I'm now trying out this uh, a full vegetarian diet. I'm not yet vegan, but that actually probably works even better for longevity as the science will tell. I do. I, I love meat. Uh, I think meat tastes great, but um, I'm more and more inclined to enjoy vegetables as well. People are going to have like four takeaways here, five takeaways. Eat less often. You would say start with eating less often by skipping one meal a day and moving from there. Yeah, yeah. And, and don't snack. And don't snack. Yep. Avoid sugary drinks and foods. Okay, eat less often. When you do eat, kill the sugar. Yeah. yeah. I, I focus on, I try to eat um, artificial sweeteners and natural ones. So stevia is a big one for me. And there are some others that are uh, out on the market that are natural, naturally occurring sweeteners. Okay. Start working toward reducing your meat intake if, if you're if you're dieting if, you, if your diet is aimed at longevity very likely you're going to need to drop your your meat intake yeah it causes a lot of uh, concern of people who are pro meat but the data is the data um, and we've got these references in our show notes that reducing the amount of red meat and in particular processed meats uh, is beneficial for long-term health and even prevention of cancer uh, and so what we want to do is to limit the nitrates, the preserved meats. If you like a good steak, by all means, eat one. It's not going to kill you. But if you try to just push yourselves towards a more plant-based, plant-focused diet and maybe have some red wine occasionally, a lot of olive oil with oleic acid, which activates sirtuins as well, um, you can go a little bit further like I have. Don't eat meat. Oh, and eventually maybe I'll give up everything that's dairy and eggs being lean as an as an older person is also beneficial. If you look at, go to a nursing home, I don't know how many people listening have been to a nursing home, but when you go there, look around, who's alive? They're not giant men who are obese. They're little women who are skinny. There's an experiment right there. It's obvious, right in plain sight. Okay, so eat less, start working toward fasting, cut the sugar, Cut the meat, eat the veggies. Don't cut the meat and respond with like a bunch of carbohydrates. Eat the veggies. Um, and if you are going to eat the veggies and you can find ones that have been stressed out and are enjoying a little xenohormetic, you, might, you may enjoy a little xenohormetic effect from that. That's great. And there's even an order at which you can eat your meals to reduce the blood sugar spike. You can put the sugar at the end of the meal. Uh, so dessert is fine, if you, but put it at the end. Don't start with sugar. Don't start with the carbohydrate because that will immediately spike your glucose. So if you are going to go back to that like second or third point, if you are going to eat sugar, yeah. eat it at the end of the meal. Right. What you eat during the meal and which, in which order it also makes a difference. Yeah. Start most, with the protein and sugar the fat. during the day. That's just... Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, eating candy uh, during the day is, is just going to make you feel lethargic when the, that sugar goes away. But 
for long-term health, even programming the epigenome for long-term health requires some hunger in individuals. And what we do to kids is we say, big breakfast, here's a snack, here's a lunch, terrible lunch typically at schools, public schools, um, big dinner, go to bed full, wake up, eat some more. We're not just causing problems for these kids' physiology for the long run, 20, 30 years later, because their epigenome is now set for feast, not famine. Right. But we're also setting them up for obesity, which shuts off their survival programs right now. So their bodies are aging quicker than they otherwise would. 